Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth. We are on video number 22 of Magisterium, Introducing the Nicolaitans, and we are on redemption. We are transformed by trusting only in the blood of Yahusha. The renewed covenant in his blood cancels the penalty of death for our sins. It makes the old covenant obsolete. The old covenant was the animal blood offered by the former priests, and the instructions were handwritten on a scroll and placed beside the ark. See Deuteronomy 31.26. The old covenant is not the Ten Commandments, nor the scriptures, Genesis to Malachi, although this is what the world has been programmed to believe. Even demons believe. We should not listen to men's interpretations, but read the word for ourselves. The truth will set us free from men's puffed-up ideas or leaven. Can we know what a book is about without reading it? People have told, told Lou how they know all about the scriptures of truth because someone told them all about it. They had never read it for themselves. A tenth of your increase. The tithe, a tenth of our increase, is food, is food and given to the old covenant priesthood to be used to support the widow, fatherless, disabled, and poor, and foreigners fleeing or passing through. Most of the burden for caring for the poor and aged folks fell on their relatives. Jacob 2.15 At Bereshit, 14, 18 through 20, we see the first occurrence of a tenth being given to the Melchizedek. The phrase we read literally says, Then Abram gave him a tenth of everything. And that was the Melchizedek priesthood. Malachi 3.10 mentions gathering food for the storehouse. Yahuwah said to withhold the tithe was robbing him. Other than the tithe of food collected by the former priesthood, alms were collected by, by the poor directly. Cornelius, a Gentile centurion, described at Acts 10, gave alms to the poor. At Acts 3, a man born lame was doing this at the beautiful gate. Occasionally, land or houses were sold and the proceeds given to the emissaries for supporting those in need. Acts 4. The Nazarene served food for the needy at tables, Acts 6. And elders who worked well at teaching the word were worthy of a double portion of food. Our close relatives and brothers and sisters in dire need of essentials for living are the recipients of, of all giving. But too often the support is mostly used for building buildings set up to teach the traditions of men. Yahushua said, Feed my sheep at Yehukin in 21. Huh? And by this, he meant to teach them to obey, not steal their food. Be careful how you listen is the next section. We are instructed to guard the commandments, and by doing this, we will be blessed. You're trying to kiss the book? It looks like it. <laughs> oh, Bellavina. Okay. So, we are instructed to guard the commandments. I apologize for that inter interruption. And by doing this, we will be Baruch blessed. Or Baruchah. But our obedience doesn't earn eternal life. We were purchased with the precious blood of Yahushua, our Redeemer. The, the severing of the scriptures into two parts was done by Marcion of Sinope, or Sinope, um, 885 to 160 CE. The tenth part, tithe, is very dear to lawless teachers who do not teach the commandments, yet they expect to receive the whole tithe in the form of money from those who whose itching ears are being scratched. We should support the needy in our family, the poor nearby, and give support 
give to support teachers who serve the body of Yahushua well. Those who do not teach the commandments do not know Yahushua. 1 Yehukin in 2, 3 through 4. How Friday the 13th became a thing. An excerpt from the book Fossilized Customs, 12th edition. Friday the 13th. Preparation Day is a term for every sixth day of the week. It is also used to refer to any day prior to an, an, an annual appointed time or yearly appointed time. Six of the seven annual appointments are movable, one of which is the first day of matzah or unleavened bread. Obviously, there are not three days and three nights between Friday night at sunset and Sunday morning. Shatan's spin doctors twisted it for us so that a Sunday morning supper they instituted would justify the old pagan day of the sun. Pagans assembled to worship the sun in the morning on the first day of the week because the entire Christian world has been programmed to believe the day of Yahushua's resurrection is permanently affiliated with the first day of the, of the week. They do not observe Passover. Shatan bruised the heel of Yahushua. The myth that Yahushua died on a Friday and not the preparation day for the High Shabbat of Matzah, Yehukin in 1931, is part of the superstition of Friday the 13th. The 13 represents the fact that there were 13 men present at the meal the previous evening. The 13th day of each Roman month has no connection with the real moon, nor the number of men present at the meal. Not only that, but what day the resurrection occurred has nothing to do with what day is the Shabbat, our day of rest. It's hard to understand how the smoke and mirrors masked so much truth and could be propagated by so many scholars over so many centuries. Shatan successfully blinded the eyes of populations with his teachers and desolated the correct pattern of observances. When was Yahushua born? Passover is a shadow of Yahushua's death, not his birth. The idea that Yahushua was, was born in the early spring when lamb's birth rates peak sounds plausible, but Yahushua's birth is more associated with Sukkot and his circumcision on the eighth day. Shepherds watch over their flocks, Yom and Lila, day and night, but especially to, to protect them from night-stalking predators, not primarily to watch for, lam for lambing. Equivocating can be unintentionally associate, associating dis dissimilar but coincidental occurrences, very much like Christianity has adopted the rebirth of the sun as the birthday of Yahushua. See more details online at this link, www.fossilizedcustoms.com slash birth.html. Yahusha and the Commandments versus the Dragon The mission he ordered to be done by his Nazarene has been resisted by the dragon. Our mission is to hunt and fish for the lost and feed them the message of truth, that is, to guard the name and commandments we were given to guard and obey. The dragon is not happy about this. Revelation 12.17 For those who are called, the differences, the differences in the words we use will be overcome by Yahushua's purification process over time. The overcoming of the world is found in our belief, following no one else but the word of Yahuwah, Yahusha himself. Our love for one another is how the world will identify us. Yahushua identifies us in this way. Ani ha gafen ata ha natsarim. I am the vine, you are the natsarim. To determine if you are on the right path to eternal life, 
read 1 Yehupanin 2 4 to test whether or not you know Yahusha. If you don't, you may be under the control of the dragon and, and not know it yet. This is your chance to take the red pill. Okay, next time we will be reading what is Tor Torah, the riddle concerning buying and selling, how to d detect the beast, Christian, what it originally meant, Christianos, the real meaning of the of the word, um, and then we'll end with that one. And then there's one that says Christianus. We'll end with that for the next uh, the next lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed the lesson today. And now it is time to praise Yahuwah. I'm going to go back to one of the throwbacks before I had notebooks. <laughs> this is my calendar, my schedule book. Awesome Yah. Our Yah is an awesome Yah. He reigns from Shamaim above with wisdom, power, and love. Our Yah is an awesome Yah. He brings rain to a dry land. He springs mighty in a desert land. He rides. His name for all to see, our Yah is almighty. He came to redeem us, and one day he'll return to separate the wheat from the tares. Our Yah is an awesome Yah, he reigns. From Shamayim above with wisdom, power, and love, our Yah is an awesome Yah. He shows us what He wants us to see through the tempest, through the whirlwind. He gives us prophecy through our trees. He is life giver he made everything on a red and in the shamai our yah is an awesome yah he reigns from shamai above with wisdom power and love our yah is an awesome yah Hallelujah. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I have another song I wanted to sing real quick for you guys. I'll just do this one a cappella because I don't really want to disturb their bingo downstairs. So, um, You Are Loved. Bless those cursing you. Yahuwah has compassion on you. Yahusha came to redeem us. You are love. You are love. You are love. You are love. Bless those cursing you. What gift is it if you love those loving you? What fruit will you gain when kingdom come? Judgment day when Yahushua comes. 
It is futile upon the arrests. The wicked get richer and the poor scream Yahushua's name. Bless those cursing you. Yahusha wants us to. You are loved. You are loved. You are loved. Yahusha loves you. And I did a short remix for that one. You are loved, you are loved. Yahuwah loves those who follow His commands. Yahuwah loves those who love their mishpaka. You are loved, you are loved. Those who bear good fruit and lived honest and true. Yahuwah Baruch's exceedingly, for you are loved, you are his beloved. We are his bride. Hallelujah. All praise and esteem to Abba Yahuwah. I love you all with an everlasting love as our Abba Yahuwah and the Shamayim loves each and every one of us. Shalom and blessings, warriors of Yahuwah and the truth.